Welcome to Biohacking with Brittany, a podcast focused on holistic health, nutrition, biohacking, and more. I'm your host, Brittany Ford, registered holistic nutritionist and self-proclaimed biohacker. During the last 10 years, I've focused on healing my gut and hormonal issues through lifestyle changes, nutrition, and of course, biohacks. And now I teach others to do the same. I'm so excited you're joining me today. So let's dive right in. Welcome to a, another episode of Biohacking with Brittany. I am super excited that you are joining me today. We are actually recording the video for this as well um, as somebody who has a YouTube channel and does not use it nearly enough. I am trying to now you know, post the video versions of this up there as well. So for anyone listening who is also on YouTube, you can definitely subscribe and watch us as we record this. Um, and today is really cool. We are going to dive into light and light therapy and also light diet and blue blockers and everything like that. Um, as any biohacker listener, listener knows, like, this market has become so saturated in the last couple of years. So I'm very excited to actually be talking about it because I don't even think I've done an episode on this yet, but I've been using blue blocking glasses for like, I don't know, three years or so, like quite a significant time now. Um, and we have an expert joining us. So welcome to the show, Rowdy Nassif. Um, you are an expert. You have your own blue blocking glasses line called Viva Rays, which I have with me. Um, you can see <laughs> right here. Of course, like wearing these right now, you know, I'm not going to wear the full red ones just because it's it's daytime. But yeah, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks, Brittany. I'm so en enthused to be here today. Yeah. So I, you know, this is how I typically like to start. Like, tell us about you and your health journey and kind of how you got to this point of developing your, your blue blocking glasses company. Yeah, totally. Uh, my story with light actually began since I was a kid, uh, being diagnosed with ADHD. I suffered from headaches agitation, and inability to focus. And growing up, I really struggled through my engineering school, staying up very late, feeling wired and stimulated, mm -hmm. only to lack the energy, motivation, and focus the following day. Now, eventually, day after day, this led me to deep depression, brain fog, and chronic fatigue. And it was very destructive to my professional life and my connection with my loved ones. So I was really desperate to find a solution. However, as I went from one holistic doctor to another, I felt very tired and overwhelmed with the different health opinions about what I should do. And I tried so many different diets and I, and I took so many different supplements. And at the time, I, and I still do, I was meditating and exercising, but nothing was working for me. And Miraculously, one specific event changed all of this. I spent several weeks on a farm being exposed only to natural light during the day and fire and candlelight during the evening. Wow. And within a matter of days, I started sleeping peacefully through the night to then wake up before the sunrise for the first time in my life, literally, feeling rested, refreshed, and energized. I literally went from feeling foggy headed, uh, uh, fatigued and depressed to feeling alive, focused and motivated. Now, how did that magic happen? I mean, I didn't change my diet. I didn't take supplements and I didn't change the way I was exercising and meditating. It blew my mind <laughs> every night. I was contemplating whether it was my light environment that magically transformed my, my, my health in as short as three days, literally. And my quest for answers led me to study and investigate more the latest discoveries in the field of circadian rhythm and the harmful effects of artificial lights on humans. And what I learned is that for thousands of years, Mankind spent much time outdoors, exposed to natural sunlight. 
which increases in intensity from sunrise to solar noon, like a crescendo of a musical scale, increasing in brightness and ascending in the blue and green light frequencies. Mm. And then it descends down the scale around sunset, transitioning into the darkness of the night. And that's when the sun starts decreasing in brightness and it descends in the blue and green light frequencies. Now, these varying color temperatures of light and varying amounts of blue and green light, depending on the time of the day, provided our bodies and brain very important information to orient ourselves around daytime or nighttime, and therefore telling our bodies when to wake up in the morning, when to think of big problems and be creative, when to optimally eat and digest better, and when to go to sleep at night. And this basically, Brittany, enabled us to live in a perfect 24-hour rhythm. Mm -hmm. However, unfortunately, in, in our modern world, this is no longer the case. We are being exposed to artificial light chronically that emits a constant blue light frequency day and night. And this frequency has a color temperature of 6,500 kelvins, mm -hmm. which is similar to sunlight's color temperature at 12 noon. Now, that's a big problem yeah. because it's confusing our brains and bodies into thinking it's 12 noon summertime all year long. And yeah. it's literally ruining our natural rhythm, which governs how well we perform our daily functions from thinking to waking up and, and feeling alert to going to sleep and healing and rejuvenating. Mm -hmm. It really depends on that rhythm. Mm -hmm. And technically, when I, when I came back from the farm to the city, uh, it became very clear to me that my light environment was causing my problems. Because yeah. the, at the time I was living in Toronto, and the moment I stepped back in Toronto, I was bombarded by artificial lights everywhere. And literally within a matter of days, my sleep and wake cycles went out of tune once again. Mm -hmm. And guess what? I, I, I start feeling uh, foggy headed and disoriented once again. So I guess at this time I was really desperate to find a solution because I really wanted to have the freedom to live in a modern world and function properly while, while, while not compromising my sleep and my health. Mm -hmm. So, I guess I, at the time I discovered blue blocking glasses and I went ahead and I tried so many in the market. Mm -hmm. But uh, to be honest with you, I was very surprised that I wasn't getting the results that I experienced on the farm, that flow of energy and, 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 uh, and sharpness that I experienced there. And after speaking to many of the world's leading expert in circadian rhythm and neurobiology, I actually learned from them that in order for the solution to be efficient, we needed a three lens dynamic light management system that blocks different amounts of blue light and decrease the brightness in different ways, as well as allow different color temperatures of light depending on the time of the day. And that really inspired me to start something for ourselves because as I looked in the market, 95% um, of the companies were providing a one-for-all solution and most of them didn't provide a scientific testing that showed exactly how, how much the lenses were blocking. Mm -hmm. I love this story. Um, of, like as a Canadian, I'm so curious, where was the farm that you went to that didn't have any of the light? Well, at the time I was living in Ontario and I uh -huh. decided to go up north in Quebec. Oh, okay. Cool. So, yeah, I lived on a beautiful farm for six yeah. weeks and I was actually camping yeah. for six weeks. And that triggered the transformation. I mean, before then, I was already studying about circadian rhythm and light and, and, yeah. and whatnot. However, it was only intellectual. And it wasn't until I went to the farm and I actually lived it, mm -hmm. that it transformed from something that I'm thinking about to something that I was actually 
experience mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. literally lifted my frequency to a whole new level. Yeah. So I, I think you've said a lot there, you know, like, so I camp um, and I like not for six weeks, but I'll go for like a weekend in the summers and we like to camp off grid. And one of the best parts about it is the lack of light. And literally it's like you, I get up like in my tent, you know, I see the bright light It comes in, could be like five in the morning, doesn't matter, you know, like super long days in August. Um, and then at night it's literally by the fire and there's something so like calming and stress-free about it. Um, and I don't need blue blockers. I don't, I don't need, I don't take any of them with me because why would you need them? You're not exposed to it, you know? So it's, it's such a beautiful way. And I, I love that that was like part of your origin story because I, you know, like that's how humans were living at one point. We were living by candlelight and, and fire only. And it was, yeah, obviously such a different time, but yeah, I, I am obsessed with blue light and blocking blue light at the right times. And because it's so, so important to your health and (laughs) like I, we have these lights in our apartment that make, that go red at night. And so they don't emit any blue light. I have blue blocking glasses. I make my phone red. I make my computer red. It's like, I'm very, very anal about it. And I like, and I don't know how much research, you know, behind this, but I've been told that if you have lighter color eyes, it actually means that your eyes are more, are more sensitive to blue light. And I totally find that I have blue eyes and it's, I'm just so sensitive. Do you find that? Is there research behind that? Or is that just like a myth? Well, I do think it's because of the melanin level in the eye. Mm. Uh, you are designed to, to absorb more light through your eyes with yeah. your, with your lighter, uh, lighter eyes color. So with that being said, you could be more sensitive to light. Mm-hmm. But that what I found is people get habituated to this artificial light at night, so much so that the rods, the parts of the eye that mm-hmm. are designed to function at night become very dysfunctional and mm-hmm. they stop working mm-hmm. because they've been chronically exposing themselves yeah. Um, to artificial light at times when they, they they are supposed to be in darkness, and that's when the rods actually work. So, with that being said, what I also find that when people start wearing blue blocking glasses, high quality glasses that are actually creating this impression of darkness, after some days, their nighttime vision becomes much much better because th- those rods that are being activated. And at this point, they become much more intuitive rather than sensitive, I would say. Mm. You become much more intuitive to when you are supposed to get that light and when you're not supposed to get that that light. So for instance, when I go camping, I could go in the forest and walk in complete darkness and I could navigate my way amazingly. And I see people with massive flashlights, blue ones that are very disturbing. And when I have conversations with them, um, I, I actually discovered that at one time I was like them because I wasn't able to navigate my way through the dark. And mm-hmm. the reason so is because my rods weren't functioning. Mm-hmm. But I will attribute that as well into you being really intuitive with the light mm-hmm. and dark cycles mm-hmm. and uh, your eyes sensing what they need. Yeah. Honestly, like I, if I see any blue light after like if I go to bed at like 9 30 10 and if I see blue light after 8 p.m maybe 8 30 like it's very disruptive like I have to keep my blue blockers on the whole time um if someone like turns on a bright light in the house or like my glasses come off and I like look at the tv like I'm just so sensitive and even like waking up during the middle of the night like if I wake up and I see a bright light like it makes it harder for me to fall back asleep. And I think a lot of people, a lot of people deal with that. Like a lot of people deal with significant sleep disruption from light that they are exposed to. Totally. I mean, it totally makes sense. And when it comes to thinking of plants and animals, we mm-hmm. seem to have a basic understanding of how light affects them. Yeah. Plants, for instance, have light sensors that enable them to anticipate the sun's position in the sky so they can turn their leaves in the right direction at every moment throughout the day and harness the solar energy. 
but they also drop their leaves down at night when the sun is absent. And this enabled them to maximize their energy intake and energy efficiency. And just like plants, as humans, we have light sensors in our eyes called melanopsin ganglion cells. And those light sensors are designed to enable us to anticipate the sun's position in the sky throughout the whole year so we can know the time of the day and the time of the season. And this literally creates massive physiological changes in our bodies depending on the time of the day and depending on the time of the year. Mm -hmm. And those melanopsin ganglion cells are most sensitive to blue and and green light. And when they pick those uh, frequencies of colors, they send a signal to the central clock in the brain, which is where our internal clock sits. Mm -hmm. And it, it it lets this clock know that it's daytime. And therefore, this clock sends signal to the millions of cellular clocks in our bodies, letting them know what to do. It's how our it's how we are designed to optimize our wakefulness hours when we see this light in the morning. Okay. Now at night, those uh, melanopsin ganglion cells, they uh, pick up the slowly fading light or the declining light in the blue and green. And when this happens, it, they signal to our center clock that the day is ending. And at this point, our center clock inform all of our body organs and tissues that it's time to wind down, relax, and start start uh, rejuvenating mm-hmm. and preparing for restful night's sleep. Now the problem is that when you disturb that cycle by exposing it to yourself even to very little amount of artificial light at night, it could start shifting your sleep and your circadian rhythm in the wrong direction. Mm-hmm. And Here's the trick that so many people don't realize. Those light sensors in the eye, they're, in in other words, it's called our retinal sensitivity, okay? And it's very low when when we first wake up in the morning. Now, what does that mean? It means that when we first wake up, we need a lot of bright light to activate those light sensors. Now, the equation changes completely at night because retinal sensitivity becomes very high, so much so that very little amount of artificial light at night could trigger those light sensors in the wrong direction. And this is exactly why it's very, very important to block Mm -hmm. that light and to enable your brain and body to understand the exact time of the day. Mm -hmm. So I think, Brittany, at this point, you're really going with your intuition and you're being Mm -hmm. very intuitive about... Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, nature's light, which we're Mm -hmm. designed to be so. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I, I have a, so I have a question for you. So in the summer when, you know, the sun goes down much later um, and, you know, it's bright outside till maybe like 9 30, 10 PM. So I try to keep my same bedtime throughout the year which is like, go to bed around nine, lights out before 10, I read type of thing. And it's much harder to do that in the summer, right? Because the sun is up and you feel, you don't feel as tired. So if I'm putting on my blue blockers a couple hours before going to bed, is it okay to do that same practice in the summer, even though the sun is still up, right? Like, so in the summer, if I put on my blue blockers at 8 p.m. or like 7.30 p.m., it feels different. Then in the yeah. winter when it's pitch black outside and I'm like already tired. Do you know what I mean? So like when should I just shift my whole sleep schedule in the summer? I don't know. I just like, I don't, I don't know if there's an answer for that, but yeah. Yeah, totally. I think that's a great question actually. And mm-hmm. I, I, I know that the light in nature is very consistent. Okay. Mm-hmm. It changes in a sequential order yeah. and it happens slowly mm-hmm. from season to season. Mm-hmm. But Physiologically speaking, we're not designed to sleep in the same way in the winter and in the summer. And in the winter, especially in the Northern Hemisphere, the day becomes very short. Mm -hmm. Now, our bodies actually know the time of the day through the length of darkness. Mm -hmm. Okay, This is what literally uh, 
trigger the signaling system for our cells about the, the, the time of the day. So when our cells start sensing longer darkness hours, mm -hmm. that's when we start shifting into a winter mode. Mm -hmm. Now, during a winter mode, as humans, we are designed to sleep longer. Our melatonin cycle is longer and our cortisol cycle is shorter. Mm -hmm. Now, what does that mean? It means that we are designed to perform autophagy and apoptosis in, um, in, 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 in like much more during the winter than in summer. Mm -hmm. Now, what, what is autophagy and apoptosis? It's cellular cleaning and cellular replacement. So autophagy is cellular cleaning, just like a dishwasher would. Mm -hmm. And uh, apoptosis is cellular replacement, just like changing the oil for your car's engine, for instance. And cells that cannot undergo autophagy and apoptosis, they develop tumor and inflammation, and they start losing efficiency. So, of like those two processes are very important processes within every cell, and they happen every night in complete darkness while we are sleeping. Mm -hmm. Now, why why am I bringing this point about the winter? Because winter is the time when there is longer, darker hours, which means that we're designed to perform autophagy and apoptosis in a much more uh, efficient and in longer for longer hours. Okay, and and this this literally uh, enable us to spring back, and this is why you know mm. this, after the winter is called spring. Yeah. In the same way, when we sleep in darkness every single night and we, when we get the darkness that our bodies are waiting for, whether in summer or in the winter, we undergo much better autophagy and apoptosis. And then we spring back when we wake up in the morning. So there's a relationship between mm -hmm. uh, the daily cycle and the seasonally cycle because it's somehow repeating itself in a different manner. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, I think we are designed to sleep longer in the winters, shorter in the summer. Mm. Okay, and okay. it would make it would make more sense uh, to uh, block that light following the sun, mm -hmm. which means in, mm. in during the winter, if the sun is setting at four, this is when you really want to start blocking blue light, and. This is exactly why we have our evening glasses and our nighttime glasses. Right. Because those evening glasses are phenomenal during shorter, uh, shorter, uh, yeah. shorter days in the, in the season. Yeah. They're, they're actually designed to block all of the blue and only the highest frequency green. So they're, they're engineered to mimic the color temperature of the bonfire or the twilight. And um, the reason why is... Let me ask you a question. How, how do you usually feel when you're around a bonfire? Oh, amazing. So good. And, right. and so happy and like calm. Yeah. You feel happy. You feel calm, relaxed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Think about it. By the beginning of the bonfire, you, you're happy, you're calm, you're relaxed. Yeah. You have enough energy to dance, cook, and socialize with your friends. Yeah. Correct. Totally. And, and these, these evening glasses have been engineered to mimic the same color temperature of the beginning of the bonfire so that you could still run your evening activities in the winter, in the fall, and in the spring without feeling too sleepy. Mm -hmm. Now, we also designed these nighttime glasses, which we usually tell people to wear them one to two hours before bed. And those, you could think of those as the end of the bonfire, when the wood turns into amber coil. Mm -hmm. Right by this time, you're probably feeling very cozy and ready for bed. Yeah, and those glasses mimic that effect because they block 100% of the blue, 100% of the green, and they decrease the brightness by 20 times, giving the brain the complete impression that it's dark outside, and totally optimizing growth hormone and yeah. melatonin, so that you can wake up in the morning springing back into life. Have you searched for coffee substitutes before? Something that tastes just as earthy, but without the caffeine? I know I definitely have. 
with the current state of things and working from home and just stress in general, I'm always interested in ways to reduce my stress and support my adrenal glands. This also includes being aware of how much coffee I'm having because I can definitely have too much coffee in the morning and be too hyped up from all the caffeine. But luckily, we can use ingredients like adaptogens, mushrooms, and minerals to enhance our mental focus and provide natural energy and vitality without the stimulating effects. This includes ingredients like lion's mane, cordyceps, reishi, gotu cola, and ashwagandha, which are designed to support our adrenal glands, the glands that release our stress hormone cortisol. They're also designed to reduce stress without any stimulating effect, and you can use them throughout the day. Oasis Adaptogens has a new coffee substitute powder out called Not Coffee, which does exactly this. They also have a supplement called Oasis Balance that is an adaptogen blend. You can take it in the morning and at night to support healthy stress management. Be sure to click the link in my show notes or on my podcast page or go to oasisadaptogens.com and use my promo code biohackingbrittany to get 10%. That's oasisadaptogens.com and my promo code is biohackingbrittany to get 10% off today. Yeah, yeah, I love that. And that's so interesting what you said about like seasonally sleeping and watching your light because I've... Yeah, I've tried to kind of maintain the same sleep schedule in the summer, and it's just so difficult. It is. So I, I kind of like this idea of sleeping more in the winter and making it more of a priority and then just kind of going with the flow of light that you're exposed to based on where you're living. I think that's very intuitive and and it makes a lot of sense. Um, and for those watching on YouTube, we're just like holding the glasses and showing them right now. Um, I have the same pair and they're actually really cool because these are the first ones I've seen that are um, magnetic. I'm assuming it's magnets um, yeah. where they start with the base, which is the daytime. And then the evening one, you just like put right on top, like you were talking about. And then <laughs> the, you know, the very red ones, which is what I wear if I watch Netflix at night. <laughs> so it's so these like the base pair ones, like even looking through them now, like I can see it's more yellow. So are these designed to be worn like when you wake up and for the whole day while you're at work on your computer or like when would you ideally want to wear these ones? Okay. Yeah, that's a great question. And to answer this, let's come back to the idea of retinal sensitivity mm -hmm. because this will really... Uh, set the tone of understanding circadian rhythm and how we can optimize our wakefulness and sleep and and, and sleeping out. Mm -hmm. Again, our retinal sensitivity when we first wake up is very, very low, which means our eyes and those light sensors, melanopsin, are waiting for a lot of bright lights to get activated and to activate all of the biological processes that we need in order to feel awake productive, and creative in the morning. Now, what does that mean? It means that when we first wake up, we don't really need to worry much about blocking light, okay? Mm -hmm. We want to get that light ideally from sunlight. This is what we want to get. But mm -hmm. if we happen to wake up before the sunrise, we, we, we don't want to worry much about artificial light because, again, our retinal sensitivity is very low and we are waiting to collect those photons. Right. Okay. Right. Now, within four hours from from the time when we wake up, this is the time when we actually are designed to collect photons, okay, and to sum up those photons of light so that we can set our circadian rhythm. And I don't know if you know, Brittany, but after four hours or a little bit less, maybe three hours, we go into a circadian dead zone, which means that no matter how much bright light we see, we're not going to be able to set our circadian rhythm anymore. Hmm. Okay. So with that being said, let's maximize light for the first three hours, ideally from sunlight, and let's not worry about artificial light. And after three hours, if we happen to work in an indoors environment where, where there's a lot of artificial lighting and in front of digital devices, we want to wear those Viva rays daytime glasses. 
Now, those Viva-Rays daytime glasses are very, very different than any other blue blocking glasses in the market. And I'm going to explain why. There are two main fundamental reasons for that. I'm going to start with the clear blue blocking glasses, where, where I guess those are the most famous one. And yeah. Uh, there's a lot of marketing gimmick around those. Now, I don't know if you tried them, Brittany, but I tried them myself. Uh, yeah, I've had a, I've had a few companies send me some pairs and they don't do anything. <laughs> okay. So when I, when I first, uh, when I arrived back from the farm and I was really desperate to find a solution, the first thing I stumbled upon were the clear blue light blocking glasses. Mm -hmm. And I instantly bought a pair and after trying it for several weeks, I didn't experience any benefits. And to be honest with you, I was laughing at myself later because I have a background in engineering and I understand light very well. So technically with clear blue blocking glasses, if you ever col played with coloring, you know, mm -hmm. if you look into a color wheel, you, you'll notice that the opposite of the color blue is orange. Mm -hmm. Okay. And as a kid, I was fascinated with coloring. I always played with uh, colors and I, I, I still remember that, and I still do actually, but if you mix up the color blue and orange, they'll cancel each other out. Mm -hmm. This means that in order to completely block blue, your lenses need to somehow be orange, mm -hmm. okay? And this also doesn't mean that all orange glasses do the same job at doing this. But this is to make the point that clear blue blockers actually do not block blue. And the reason why I've tested them personally with a professional spectro a spectro color meter. And it turns out that those clear blue blockers, they, blo they block the blue purple version of light mm -hmm. up to 420 nanometer. And blue light ranges actually from 380 to 500 nanometer, which is the wavelength of light. And blue purple goes from 380 Till 420. Right. Now, why is that a problem? Because if you ever measure the light that is emitted from LED bulbs and screens, you will see that it doesn't emit any blue light below 420 nanometer. Mm -hmm. It actually peaks at 455 nanometer in blue. And this means that when you wear clear blue blockers, you're actually blocking blue light that is not emitted from those harmful devices. It's like trying to rinse your quinoa in a pasta strainer. The <laughs> quinoa will end up passing through the holes because you're, you're using the wrong filter. Mm -hmm. and, and therefore, for anyone listening and for anyone who has ever been convinced that clear blue blockers work because of yeah. this pen, I reassure you that it's not. And this pen is a trick. <laughs> yeah. because it's a blue purple light. It doesn't actually emit the same blue light that is... Yeah. being emitted from those devices. Yeah, I've seen that and I've seen the videos. Um, I think it's hilarious. And <laughs> and of course, of course, right? So, so why do you think that companies have come out with clear blue blocking glasses? Like, why do you think, why do you think they felt the need to create a product like that for the market? Well, I have come to believe after having so many conversations with optometrists, that's actually ignorance about the science mm. of light and ignorance about what we're being what we're being exposed to. Oftentimes, as humans, we get excited about hypes, and yeah. th there was a lot of hype that blue light is bad, and yeah. no one took the time to think what is that blue light that we're being exposed to, and no one measured. So uh, it's mm -hmm. often ignorance than than not. Yeah. And also, like, not all blue light is bad, right? Like, kind of like what you were saying, you need it. You need it at the right time throughout the day in order to feel energized and be in rhythm with nature and the seasons and the sun. And and so it makes sense to kind of have, like, progressive glasses like you have that are clear and then are a bit more orangey and then red and you use them appropriately. But even the clear ones, like I said previously, like that I'm wearing right now, like it's very obvious, like when I move them like this, how much more blue light there is coming through because they're not clear. They do have some pigment in them, which is what is needed. And so I think it's very cool that you've created glasses that 
have done this and kind of mimic nature in that way. And, and it's really needed. Yeah, I'll explain a little bit more about this. You, you bring up a, a, a wonderful point mm -hmm. because I guess as a humans, we have fell into the habit of always classifying things. Yeah. They, 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 we always want to think of things in polarities and yeah. in black and white. Yeah. But in nature, the power that we're exposed to is ju just is. It's neither good or bad. And it's yeah. the same for blue light. Blue light is not, not good or bad. It's relative. Okay. Mm -hmm. And its effect on us will really depend on the time of the day that we are exposing ourselves to it. That's one. And the second point is whether or not it was proportionate with the other color frequencies. Mm -hmm. And this is a very important point. Now, the answer for this becomes very easy because the blue light that modern humans are exposing themselves to come from human man-made light. And this light, unlike sunlight, is not balanced. If you look at the spectral curve of sunlight, it's balanced with the orange, red, and yellow. Okay, and it creates this full spectrum richness. Mm -hmm. The balance, it, 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 like in a way, blue light has some degenerative properties, but also orange and red have regenerative properties. And when they come together, they create a balance effect. Mm -hmm. In contrast, the blue light coming from screens peak at 455. Nan uh, nanometer in wavelength, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. and is very deficient in the orange, uh, red, and yellow. And this explains why people could feel agitated, could feel eye strain and eye fatigue when exposed to this light for longer hours. Yeah. So with that being said, there are some companies also offering yellow tinted glasses for daytime use. And after testing those for a while and after having conversation with uh, many of the world's leading experts in neurobiology and circadian rhythm, mm -hmm. we learned that those could be actually very detrimental because they're blocking 100% of the blue light at 455. Mm -hmm. And the process of doing this, they wipe out the blue turquoise at 480 nanometer. Now, why is that a problem? Because as you may know, Brittany, the 480 nanometer is a very important frequency during the day mm -hmm. to reset our circadian rhythm, elevate our mood, and increase our sharpness. So with that being said, you want to make sure that your daytime blue blockers are not blocking blue light, but rather transforming blue light. Mm -hmm. And this is what our daytime glasses do. They take this 455 nanometer wavelength, and they decrease its sharpness, and they make, make it more balanced and proportionate with the yellow and the green. And this way, it creates a more balanced effect without blocking blue light. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it, it it makes a lot of sense. Um, and I, again, like, I think it's really cool that you have made such a effective solution for it. And I, it's interesting that you bring up like symptoms of blue light because I think there's quite a range of them. So like, I mean, like overexposure to blue light. So for myself, like it's very much impacts my sleep. Um, and I'm very like sensitive to that. But my partner, like he also works online, works from home and he actually gets headaches. And what we found even like with like taking magnesium and all these different things that you can take for headaches, like it actually is like the chronic blue light from his computer, from his phone, from his monitor, always shining on him that is kind of triggering these headaches. So are there a, like a set of symptoms that are normal for people to experience if they've been overexposed to blue light? Well, if we think of it from the perspective of nature, it makes mm -hmm. perfect sense because high frequency colors like blue, purple, and ultraviolet mm -hmm. are very stimulating in nature. Yeah. And this doesn't mean that they're bad. They're stimulating in a very awesome way mm -hmm. because they increase our sharpness but not only this, they increase oxidative stress in a balanced way. So much so that they trigger uh, the, the production of antioxidants. Just like if you exercise, for instance, it's going to create a mild oxidative stress, which will um, you know, trigger the production of uh, antioxidants and 
um, activate your immune response and the immune system in a good way. Now, this if if you keep exercising 24 hours per day without giving yourself the time to, you know, rest and, and rejuvenate, what's going to happen? Yeah. You're, you're going to run into big problems, okay? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that exercise is bad. It means that we're using it in an incorrect manner. Right. And the same with blue light. The blue light is designed to increase the oxidative stress in a balanced manner. And when you're exposed to it with the other colors, it creates this balance. Now, the problem in our society that we are chronically exposed to it 24 hours, mm-hmm. 24-7. And this is creating a massive oxidative stress and creating degeneration in our cells, which people start experiencing it in so many different ways, whether it's eye strain, headaches, eye fatigue, dehydration. And there's a, a whole ton of other things that blue light can cause. I mean, uh, a scientist from Germany called Fritz Holwish, uh, back in the 1970s, uh, he published some studies showing that the stress hormone cortisol was significantly higher when sitting under artificial blue light. And this, this makes perfect sense. But when I first did my test, it was around 10 microgram per deciliter at night. Mm-hmm. And basically at night, your cortisol level should be around one microgram per deciliter max. Mm-hmm. And it turns out that this is very common. 90% of our clients who take the test show their cortisol peaking at night. And as a result, this takes a toll on their morning cortisol because yeah. they sleep terribly and they're secreting cortisol at the wrong time of the day when they're actually supposed to be secreting melatonin and Mm -hmm. growth hormones, Mm -hmm. those hormones that are designed to improve their sleep and enable them to rejuvenate and repair at night. Now, the equation is reversed for most people in our modern world. Mm -hmm. They are secreting a lot of cortisol at night, and they wake up feeling exhausted and tired. Now, why? Because they're lacking the the healthy cortisol pulse in the morning, which activates our uh, body into wakefulness. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they go and they start drinking coffee and they reach out to stimulants and eventually they burn out. I'd love to quickly interrupt this podcast to ask you, do you know your biological age? Do you know your current hormone, vitamin, and mineral levels? Honestly, it's hard to know what's going on internally without getting tested. And traditionally, you'd have to go through your doctor or your healthcare provider to order these tests, go into a lab, and it would be a whole ordeal. Um, And it would would take a while as well. For me personally, this has always been a hurdle for understanding what is actually going on and how to optimize my biomarkers and even know my biological age in the first place. Thankfully, though, we can order a at-home test from Inside Tracker that lets us do this. It tests for your biological age, your hormone, mineral, and vitamin levels. This is a very, very comprehensive test that lets you get a ton of data from a single kit without having to go to a doctor or go to a lab or really leave your house. If you're looking for the ultimate blood test, try Inside Tracker, which includes testing 43 different biomarkers and the option to test your inner age and your DNA. You can use my discount code BiohackingBritney for 25% off all of their products, and you can go through there uh, through the link in my show notes or my website and get tested today. <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> uh, guilty is charged. Um, yeah, I, it makes a lot of sense when you kind of take a step back and look at it like that. It's not necessarily the blue light that you're exposed to that is triggering the symptoms. It's the lack of proper light throughout the different times of the day, right. And how that kind of impacts sleep and lack of sleep and what that impacts and the cortisol curve, right. Um, so it's very holistic in nature, and I and I definitely agree with that. 
Um, and I, I know you talk a lot about like light diet, right? So, you know, people started, like people use the word like junk light now, kind of like junk food, junk light. And then now it's kind of transitioned to light diet um, versus a regular diet. Obviously that's based off of like your nutrition and your food. So for people listening who kind of are starting to hear these terms of junk light and light diet, can you describe what they mean um, and how we can kind of just be aware of it going throughout our lives? Yeah, totally. I also want to invite the listeners to um, download our free, free guide. It's called Light, the Key to Mastering Your Sleep and Energy. And it's a beautiful guide that has all the tools, tips, and strategies that you need in order to literally elevate your light environment to a whole new level in as short as three days so you can fully master your sleep, have more energy and focus, and become more productive. We designed this guide to be very straightforward and to have all the action steps that you can take today in order to reverse uh, your light environment and literally optimize it. And we we touch upon a lot of those topics that we're discussing today with and, and the beauty about it is that it always has action steps that you can take in order to maximize your light exposure throughout the day. Now, you, you, you ask a beautiful question there about light nutrition. And in my words, light nutrition is at least, at least as important as food nutrition. Now, in our modern world, this is not the case with most practitioners and most health experts. And the reason why, I guess, after I have investigated this for a while, I, I came to believe that most people think that light is something superficial that makes vision possible. However, it's much more profound, powerful, and influential than this. Mm -hmm. And when I talk about light, I always like to refer back to the genius Albert Einstein who taught us a lot about the mysteries of light. However, up until now, we're just starting to integrate what Einstein taught us. And through his law of relativity, E equal MC2, E being light, M being mass and C velocity, Einstein taught us that light and matter are exactly the same things. And when light slows down, mm -hmm. it creates things of mass. Okay, think about it. E mm -hmm. equal MC2. Light slowing down, it creates things of mass. And this means that everything around you at this moment, Brittany, including ye, you and me and the planet, was once light mm -hmm. and is profoundly influenced by light. And biologically speaking, it means that when light enters the cornea and the eye, it slows down. And through the, this light that is entering our body, we are being recreated and regenerated with new life every single day. Mm -hmm. And this is not philosophy. This is quantum physics. Mm -hmm. I personally didn't know that. And for 25 years, as I was suffering from brain fog and chronic fatigue, and as I kept going from one holistic doctor to another, Everyone was so focused on my food diet and my supplements, and no one ever asked me about my light diet. And one, one day, I was home listening to a podcast by Dr. Jack Cruz, one of my mentors, and he's a neurosurgeon in the States. And up until this point, he was the first guy I ever heard talking about the power of light. Mm -hmm. He was explaining how light affects our mental health, digestion, and sleep. And he said something that stuck with me. He said, the right type of light at the right time of the day can create healing and wonders. However, the wrong type of light at the wrong time of the day will create illness, anxiety, depression, and overweight issues. Yeah. And at the time, I was intrigued and borderline in disbelief. However, I, I felt so keen to investigate more. Mm -hmm. I, I remember asking myself, 
well, how is it that light can affect us so deeply? I mean, for me, light was something that I switch on and off. That's it. <laughs> yeah. And, and this question led me to learn more about the mitochondria, the power engine in our bodies that, pro- that burn the food that we eat and produce our energy in the form of adenosine triphosphate or ATP. And we can think of ATP as the currency of our body, okay? And when it splits open, it creates the dollars or the energy units that our body needs for optimal functioning. Now, it turns out the mitochondria not only is an energy producer, so not only mitochondria produce all our energy, Mm -hmm. but also uh, senses what is going on in the environment, okay? And it mediates communication between the environment and the cell, all right? And the most important information that is being transmitted from our environment to our cells is light. And this light information is being used by the mitochondria to instruct our DNA on what to do. And this means that through this light information, we can reverse disease and alter our genetic expression because as the mitochondria instruct our DNA, it changes the proteins that are coded by this DNA, which affects the health and the functioning of our organs without changing the code itself. Mm -hmm. Now, let's step back a little bit and think about it. Mitochondria, for billions of years, has evolved under full-spectrum sunlight during the day, which optimizes its ability to generate energy, and they are designed to repair themselves at night in complete darkness, okay? And the problem for most people, and for me personally, is that I was getting very little sunlight during the day, and I was sabotaging myself with late-night screen and computer use, which... Uh, destroyed my melatonin, the most important hormone for the engine mitochondria to repair itself. Okay, so let's let's think of this engine as how an engine of the car would function. Mm -hmm. If we think of an engine of a car, it requires fuel, oxygen, and a spark to create an internal combustion and burn that fuel and generate energy, correct? Mm -hmm. Now, mitochondria also require fuel in the form of food, oxygen as we breathe, and a spark in the form of light to ignite that process of metabolism. And if the ignition system of the car is not functioning properly, food food and high, uh, high quality vitamins and food will not be able to run this car. And similarly, in our mitochondria, if we are eating great quality food, but we're not exposing ourselves to full spectrum sunlight during the day and a lot of darkness at night, it will cause the engine to be broken. Mm -hmm. And if the engine is broken, it doesn't matter how well we're eating, we're not going to process that food well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I... I love how you explained that. And I think that's a great example of kind of looking at it through a very practical way and something that's easy for everybody to understand. Um, yeah. And it's important, right? It's, it's For everything that we've touched upon today, all the symptoms that you can deal with, how it impacts your mitochondrial functioning, all of it. Like it's light is too important to just be overlooked and not get enough sunlight during the day and then be blasted by blue light at night from your phone, from your computer, whatever, like exactly like you were saying. Um, so yeah, in, in terms of people wanting to try Viva Rays or get in contact with you or get your guide, which I will definitely put the link in the show notes for, um, how can they find you and, and how can they connect from you from here? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so for anyone who's wanting to download the guide, you can simply go on www.vivarays.com, V-I-V-A-R-A-Y-S.com, mm-hmm. and you can download your free guide. 
And uh, I know that we've covered a lot today and there's a mm-hmm. lot more to cover. And as a humans, we learn with repetition and with application. So what I invite the audience is to grab this co- this free guide and to read it again and again and again until you find yourself that you're applying what you're studying. Because let's face it, Brittany, so many people today are obsessed with studying and with consuming a lot of books, but how many people are actually altering their results? Mm -hmm. Very few people. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because we are continuously exposed to superior knowledge, yet we find ourselves uh, going uh, and experiencing inferior results. And this is because our conscious mind understands, but we're not impl- implanting those ideas into our subconscious mind, which mm-hmm. literally is the thing that control our results. And with that being said, I invite everyone to keep reading that guide until you find yourself in application and an experience of what you're studying. Yes. You could also... Uh, find our glasses on our website, mm-hmm. the Clip and Go Technology. And feel free to follow us on Instagram on, and Facebook where we share a lot of our educational material and we break it down in, into digestible chunks so people could relate to the material and be able to apply it on a daily basis. Yeah. Yeah, you really do. You do in your in your posts. Um, I will put all of that in the show notes for everybody so they can find you easily. And everybody, seriously, download that guide. It's beautiful and explains things so well. Um, thank you for coming on. And this was great. I learned a lot. And I hope, I hope a lot of people look at your Viva Rays because I love them and I'm wearing them. And check out your guide as well. Totally. Thank you so much, Brittany. And uh, I really enjoyed our conversation today. Thank you so much for tuning in today. As always, feel free to screenshot this episode and tag me if you'd like me to respond. I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you have a question about your health, my DMs are always open and I'm currently taking new clients. Thanks and see you next time.